In this video, we'll be reviewing how to write the recursive equations for a couple quadratic functions. To do this, we're going to start by extending the given table to include the first and second differences. We'll label that first difference in the first column. To find the first differences, we're going to be looking at the change in the f of x values. As I don't have a term above negative 5 right now, I won't have a first difference here. However, to go from negative 5 to 0 is an increase of 5. To go from 0 to 7 is an increase of 7, then 9, then 11. Now it's important when you're writing the differences to make sure to include the sign if it's going down. If it is decreasing, you need to call it a negative. For the second differences, we're going to look at the change in the first difference column. As I didn't have a first difference there, I won't have a second difference. And I won't have one here either. However, to go from 5 to 7, now we're seeing a growth of 2. We'll call that a positive 2. To go from 7 to 9, it's also an increase of 2, and so is it from 9 to 11. As an aside note, if they'd asked me to prove that this was a quadratic function and I was not given it, I would do that by looking at the first and second differences. If the first differences are linear and the second differences are constant, I know that I'm dealing with a quadratic function. When it comes time to actually write the recursive value, I'm going to do that by defining the beginning term. Here, f of 2 was 5. Actually, it's negative 5. And then, I have to write how any term relates to the previous. The way we do that is to say that f of x equals f of x minus 1. Again, that just says how any term relates to the previous. To be quadratic, I know that's going to have some linear growth. I need to figure out what that growth is. So I'm going to come off to the side again, and I'm going to call it the linear change. To be able to describe that linear change, I need to look at the first and second differences. I'm going to call it d of x. I look at the beginning value in the first difference table. It started with a 5. I then look at how that first difference column is growing, and to do that I look at the second differences. I see that the first differences are always increasing by 2. So we know it's plus 2. And that's for each of the x's. However, Looking at the table, we see that the 5 for the first difference happened when x is 3. We didn't start adding 2 until after x was 3. The way we show that is quantity x minus 3. I'm now going to simplify this equation. To do that, I'll distribute the 2, and I get that 5 plus 2x minus 6. Simplifying it a bit more, I get that d of x equals 2x minus 1. The minus 1 is from the 5 minus 6. I now know, because of this 2x minus 1, that my recursive equation is any term is equal to the previous term plus 2x minus 1. Just to review how I did that real, real quick again, I look at the first change for the first difference, and I see that the beginning value here was a 5. That tells me when I write that expression, it's going to be a 5. I then look at the second differences and see that they're all increasing by 2. Because these are all increasing by 2, I know that we're going to have a plus 2 in that linear change. I see that the 5 occurred for the first difference when x was 3, and that we didn't start adding until after the x equals 3. So, I know over here, we're going to have x minus 3. And then lastly, once we know what the expression is for the linear change, this 2x minus 1, that's how the recursive equation is going to end. Now, let's look at a little bit harder example. So let me bring up another example here. For this one, we're going to go ahead and we're going to write the recursive equation again. But to do it, we are again going to have to increase our table to include the first and second differences. To explain this one, to go from 34 to 14, it's decreasing, so we'll put a minus 20. To go from 14 to 2, we see a change of negative 12, then negative 4, then positive 4. For the second differences, we'll look at the change from negative 20 to negative 12. That's actually an increase of 8. To go from negative 12 to negative 4 is also increasing by 8, and so is it from negative 4 to 4. 
to find the change for our recursive equation, I know that the first of the first differences was negative 20. I know that each time we're increasing by 8, and it's, half, it's happening after x is negative 2. I do need to be careful with that because that's going to become x minus the negative 2. Cleaning this up, I see that we get negative 20 plus 8 quantity x plus 2. Again, the x plus 2 is because we had minus a negative 2. Distributing the 8, we're going to see that we get d of x equals negative 20 plus 8x plus 16. And then further simplifying it, we'll see that we get 8x minus 4. When I write the recursive equation here, I know that i got to start by defining the beginning term. So in this case, f of negative 3 was 34. Any term is the previous, and now I know also plus 8x minus 4. And that concludes how to write a recursive equation for a quadratic function.